afternoon, everybody. Good night. <laughs> um, I am Charles Tur, uh, working for MVP. Uh, MVP is a company who produce machine, and I'm a specialist in closed mold processes, RTM, light RTM, and fusion, flex molding, and so on. So I do that since uh, 30 years, traveling around the world, and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit what the customers are doing. Uh, we do sell equipment, but as a technical support, we also provide technical information to help customers to build more than to go in production. So MVP is a producing machine for the whole composite industry. We have a chop gel coat application, filament widening, putty, adhesive, specialty systems, silicon spray, injection, RTM, light RTM, and fusion, and many other machines. So we were working for many time with uh, RTM, light RTM, and we find that customer sometimes has a part which are complicated uh, with undercut where we cannot use a counter mold. So we had to find a solution, and uh, this is why we developed flex molding. What we call flex molding is not silicone. What we call flex molding is the capacity to use an injection machine to, uh, to infuse a part. So we move and fusion to production. So we can do that with a normal plastic bag, as we can do that now with a silicone membrane. So when we want to produce by infusion, we need an injection machine. We need accessories, which are in the middle, injection head, a uh, sensor, pressure sensor, control box, and then a silicone machine if we want to build a silicone membrane. So this is our silicone uh, machine. Silicone is easy because it's one-to-one, -one, so nothing complicated. And with the same machine, you can pour the silicone or you can spray the silicone. Between the machine and the mold, we have uh, a lot of uh, accessories that help uh, to fix and to connect the machine to the bag. So I'm going to show you some projects, what the customers do around the world with the flex molding, and then I will show you pictures of a full project, which is interesting. So here we are in uh, Thailand, where customers produce part, uh, which is a dashboard, a bus dashboard, and the mold is a split mold. So two parts of mold, and then they use the membrane. So we start with them in 2016, and after that, they produce themselves all the silicone membrane, and now they produce parts, for example, here, they produce 10 parts per day on the same mold with the same silicone membrane. Fire Vehiculus in Dubai, a company of 3,000 people who produce all the fire vehiculus for airport and for cities. So often, customers ask us how many parts can we produce with the same silicone membrane. We have customers who go over than 1,200 parts with the same silicone membrane, as we have here in France for floor vehicles. Here we are in Macedonia, where they produce a part for bus also. A small company in Turkey who produce a water slide. Pauline. Pauline has 1,500 light at mold. molds. And uh, four years ago, they decided to move also for flex molding for all the parts with undercut. And I guess today they have something like between 60 or 100 silicon membrane. Not sure. Here is in UK, my Chris. They produce a radome where the part thickness has to be very accurate, 1.2 millimeters. Here we are in Hungary, where we produce a water tank for agriculture. So uh, with the process that I'm going to show you, we can infuse the part in one hour, or in 30 minutes, or in 15 minutes, or even in 10 minutes. Here we are in New Zealand, and uh, we produce a rotary platform. I'm going to develop that a little bit later. A big market for the silicon membrane actually are the nacelles. The nacelles are the part of, uh, that cover the engine of the wind blade, so that's perfect for that. Here we are in Brazil, where they produce the noise for the, for the blade. Bus part in France, a little bit bigger. Here we are in Spain, where they produce water reservoir. So they produce all the panels. The part are, I think, 36 square meters. So that's the membrane, just to give you an idea. 
and that's the, uh, that's the reservoir when they assemble all the panel. Why they produce it like that instead of concrete? Because they can produce it in Spain and they can transport it all over Europe. So they can sell it everywhere, which is much more convenient for them. So let me show you uh, a project. That project is run in New Zealand. New Zealand is a small country, but big country at the same time. The problem in New Zealand is that everything you import is expensive, so they have to, to find solutions for everything. Here, the process uh, we use here is closed mold to produce parts which are rotary platforms. This is for the milkage of the cows. So the cows are moving into the platform, and that platform runs 365 degrees in five minutes. So when the cows arrive, they connect the milkage vacuum system, the platform turns, and then at the end, the cow escapes by himself. So this is the cows, and this is the platform that we talk about. That platform used to be in concrete, 25 ton, so of course very complicated to transport, and now it's done completely in composite, and they sell it all over the world. They have platform for 50 cows, they have platform for 90 cows, they install in China, in South Africa, in USA, all over the world. So as you can see, the panels are fixed on the metal structure, and for that, they need to be reinforced. So this is the guy who initiated the project, he's a big company in New Zealand. So this is the first part. They decide to go for infusion for the first one, to see how it's working. And what you see here are the metal structure that they incorporate into the part. So they mix metal and composite, which is a little bit complicated. So they make the first part, everything was working, but now they have to move to production. So this is why they decide to use lighter tear. So this is the counter mold. And because we have the metal structure, then we have the resin channel along the metal structure where we inject the resin. So it's a, a sandwich part. They load all the precated uh, PVC foam with the glass on the top, then the metal structure that they cover by the glass, and then we inject the resin on the top of the metal structure. So it looks like an infusion process with a, a light ATM counter mold. We are between. So they produce the part, but at the beginning it was working well, but you see to close the mold, they have to walk on it, they try to pull the vacuum everywhere, they connect the pipe everywhere. It was working, but it was a little bit complicated for high production. Everything we do at MVP when supporting customer is to focus on production details. This is where we can help the customer to save money and to have enough money to buy our equipment, which is normal. So here, that's the longer part and the small part. So then we move for the second generation. In this second generation, we change everything, including the metal structure. We remove the metal structure and we replace it by, by a PVC foam. So this is the pattern to build the counter mold, all the calibrated parts. So now we have the mold and the counter mold. We load the glass. The problem also in New Zealand, like everywhere, is employment. They have to find people who work even if they don't have the right knowledge. So by the process, they were able to employ people who have zero knowledge about composite. As you can see here on the PVC foam, we groove it. And that is the resin channel. So instead to groove the quantum mold for the resin to flow, we groove the PVC foam for the resin to flow. And the channel stay on the part which is no problem in that area. So that girl who worked there was employed two months before I take these pictures, and she ran the part perfectly, because she knows exactly what she has to do. She has a checklist. She has the tools to load the things. Here you have a metal insert. This is where they will fix, after that, the platform on the metal structure, and the resin channel below. So they cover it. Load the glass, close the mold. Nobody walk anymore on the mold because we use what we call the vertical flange. So as soon as the counter mold touch the female mold, 
then there is a lip seal. You just apply the vacuum and everything slides on automatically. It makes everything easy, it locates it. So we continue to inject on the same way. We inject in the middle, then here, then here. So that's the production, you see, six, uh, five, 6,000 parts, I think. So that's the way they produce. And when they demold, one thing which is very important is that everything is clean. We don't want to see anybody cleaning mold and counter mold, removing gel coat or resin by the tools that will remove the semi-permanent release agent. That's a very important step to save time in production. So they demold the part and everything is clean. So they screw through the metal, insert the lifting system and they demold the part. Okay, so they have produced a high number of parts like that. And then they decide to change it and to go for the next generation. So that was their gel coat cabin. When they apply the gel coat, you see there is a lot of insert inside. So it's a, it's a complex part. So after it, they decide to go for a, a part which is without reinforcement, just a sandwich flat part. And then, because now uh, we have a lot of uh, very good adhesive on the market, they decide to make a corrugated part that they will bond on it. So this is the mold. This is the counter mold. Light RTM. And this is the way they inject these corrugated parts. So we have designed all the injection uh, uh, details for them. So they build the mold by themselves. This is the injection machine. They just inject the part. So when they inject the part, the machine has a predeterminating counter, so they just push the button to start and they can go to work on another part. The machine will stop automatically when the right quantity of resin will be injected. So it's easy. And this is the part that they mold and they bond on that part together. Then they produce like that a quantity of part and then they decide to change again. They find that they can buy in China uh, a pultruded profile. So instead to make this complicated corrugated part, they just bond the, um, they just bond the pultruded profile on the back and that's fine. So in this case, they wanted just to decrease the weight of the part, increasing the mechanical properties. This is why they stopped to work with counter mold. That's the second part. This is where they assembly the rotary platform, as you can see with all the system for the milk cage. So now they decide to move and to go for silicone, for flex molding. So this is the mold. This is the silicone machine I'm talking about. So we have been there. We make a training with them. And we make the first membrane together, spraying the silicone to build the membrane. The membrane are not really thick. We talk about three millimeters maximum. And the membrane are reinforced by a technical cloth to be sure that we don't uh, destroy it in production. So then we put the resin channel on the top of it. Then we make another part, another membrane. And then we demold the membrane, ready to go for production. So this is, as you can see here, the adhesive machine and the injection machine. So they load all this glass. As you can see here, there is more technical glass into the part. So we, we save weight and we increase mechanical properties. So then we load the silicone membrane on the top of the mold, ready to inject. We have a groove here where we pull the vacuum below to tight, to close and tight the silicone membrane, and the vacuum resin channel to help to pull the air when I'm fusing a part. So the resin is injected in the middle of the part into the vacuum resin channel that I'm going to explain if I have time. Yes, I think I have. Perfect. So. And then this is the part after injection. When we demold, our resin channel is here, but you are not able to see the resin channel. So there is no waste, no resin waste, even if you have a long part. So the same for the other part. Then we have the lifting system for the membrane. And the part is bigger and the membrane is bigger to not leave the membrane on the floor, to not damage it. So they have also all the organization around. There is only five people working this workshop. But everything is organized to save time in production. 
You can have the best system in the world if you have no organization around the process, you will never produce a lot. The organization around the process is something very, very important. So you see here, they can turn them all to gel coat the part, which is very convenient. They even don't protect the floor. You see, they can spray like that. It's, it's really clean. And this is the injection. So we inject the resin here and here, and we pull the vacuum on the other side, and the resin flows step by step. And there is nothing to do, just watching if you want. Then we demold the part, and that's the part after demolding. You are not able to tell how we infuse the part. You are not able to tell where, where the resin channel. Okay? So I'm going to show you why. Perfect. So when we have a mold, we have two possibilities. We can use an existing mold, which is a flat flange, as you can see here on the left, or better, we groove the mold to uh, seal the membrane. So to do that, we have to help the customer with a specific seal to make the groove. So as you can see here, we have the groove. I don't know if we have a laser. Is the laser or? It's a laser? No. Yes, it's a laser. Thank you very much. So here we have the groove where we pull the vacuum below the silicone. So when we pull the vacuum here, we suck the membrane into the groove and then we tighten the membrane perfectly. The resin is coming from here and here we have a vacuum channel all around the part. So when building a mold, we have the pattern and on the pattern on the flange, we build, we bond, sorry, this specific seal, which is a two-part seal that we develop to help customer to make it. So then we laminate the mold, and when we demold the mold, we just remove one part of the seal. We leave the second one into the mold. Okay? Then we make some tests with the silicone, we calibrate the part thickness, and then we build the membrane by spraying four layers of silicone, where we integrated a technical cloth. That we have the seal still on the mold, and as you can see, the top part of the seal is made by the silicone. So when we remove the bottom part of the seal, then we have the free vacuum channel to suck the membrane. So it's very convenient, and the mold is completely reusable. The, the seal is completely reusable, sorry. So then you can see here, when we load the membrane into the groove, we just apply the vacuum. We inject the part, and when we demold, this is the part. The most important for us is that every time we demold, everything is clean. So this is how the vacuum channel is working. That is not our idea. That idea was developed by an engineer from Netherlands uh, 15 years ago. But at this time, silicone was very expensive, and they never used the idea. Also, he never find a way to pass through the channel to introduce the resin, so he was making hole through the female mold to pass the resin, which is completely unacceptable in production. So we think about the ID, we continue to develop the ID, and we use it because it's very good. So when we build the membrane, as you can see on the top, the membrane is flat, and when we apply a vacuum, we create the resin channel. It's working like that. On the number one, on the top, this is the mold, fiber glass, and the membrane under vacuum. Then we apply a second vacuum, as you can see on the number two, and then we collapse the resin channel. At this time we introduce the resin, the resin flow into the channel, and then just before the end of the part, we stop to pull the vacuum on the resin channel, and then the membrane comes back flat. So you are not able to tell how we inject the part. It's like magic. So this is the way we build the membrane, and we build it like that, and we have to put a technical cloth inside, so we have a stretchable technical cloth to be sure that the membrane can collapse into the half corrugated tube that we put on the top. We use a corrugated tube because we need to roll the membrane. So it works like that. So now we have to face situation and to answer to the customer requirement. Silicone membrane can go up to 40, 35, 40 square meter. After that, it starts to be too big. So people also don't have a big product.
fiction. Sometimes they want to produce only 10, 15, 20 parts. But they lack the idea of the resin channel. So we have the possibility to burn only the resin channel using a plastic bag on the top of it. So this is what we do here. We load it on the top of the glass, we infuse, and when we demold, as you can see, there is no visible resin channel here. So if that works for small parts, it may work for large parts. Here, for example, we produce a blade of 15 meter long using only one injection port. So that opens the possibility of many things. So this is when we inject the blade, so you can see here, we can easily roll all the resin channel. So normally it takes a long time for the people to load all the spiral tube, be sure that they don't move when we load the plastic bag and so on. Here you just unroll your silicone resin channel and then it takes two minutes and your resin network is on place. So you load the plastic bag on the top of it, you are fine with that. On the resin channel connection, we can connect the valve connected to the machine and you inject with the resin. Do you see the resin flow in 15 meters? It's the same. Why? Because we use the power of the injection machine to push the resin into the resin channel. So the resin flow first into the resin channel and then flow both sides of the resin channel. If we just apply the vacuum, the resin will flow into the glass at the same time that it flows into the resin channel. And infusion will be completely different. So we decrease a lot the infusion time by doing that. And that's the part when we demo. So it's, uh, you see, it's, it's very nice. So the point is, you cannot forget to stop the vacuum into the resin channel because the resin channel is full of resin and collapse. If you forget it, it's a massive quantity of resin that will cure and may damage your mold. So this is why we have a security, we have an automatic vacuum channel here. So when you stop the injection, automatically it stops pulling the vacuum into the resin channel and it lets the air coming into the resin channel to be sure that it deflates. Because to stop the vacuum is not enough, you need the air coming in for the membrane to come back flat. So then this is all the lifting system for the membrane and of course we have to take care that we can roll the membrane. This is, I don't know, 8 meters and you can see we can easily roll the membrane along. Working with the silicone gives a lot of advantages uh, and we can develop a lot. For example here, that was 5 years ago, we decided to make a mold with a lot of different things. For example, here we have a split mold. So the mold is assembled by vacuum. When you infuse on the top of that, you have to be 100% sure there is no air leak. If not, the air will come into the laminate. Here, there is two membranes assembled by the vacuum and the resin passing through when we inject. Then we have a heated mold and we have a heated membrane. Both of it. So this is the collapsible resin channel, heated mold, closing system, Heated membrane, split mold, where we build the own uh, seal with the silicone, the same we use to build the membrane. Split membrane, grooved membrane, we can do many things. For example, this morning it was a demonstration about the people who make prepreg. So they make their prepreg and on the top of that they put a net. You have the possibility to create the structure of the net into the silicone, then you don't need the net anymore. Here, that was interesting. This is a bus dashboard. Even by a player, this is a nightmare to produce that kind of part. Here we have four parts assembled by vacuum and then a silicone membrane to produce the part. So this is the way we organize all the vacuum channel to pull the vacuum and to assemble the mold all together. And then we infuse the part inside that. That's a really technical. So then we do organize training for that through our distributor. So we can organize that with several customers, as we do here. We are in Japan. We have 25 customers coming for three days training. When we talk about something and we go straight away on the workshop to do it. So for example, here we pull the silicone membrane and the customer inject the part with it. Or we go to customer and we make a customer training. This is what we do here. We uh, have a, we have a small mold for the first. Then the second day we make a part which is a little bit bigger and more technical and then we let the customer bring by himself a part which is bigger to be sure
feel that he understands everything. So that's the injection of the part with the customer. So our goal is to help you to move up in production. The process is not for sale, the process is for free. What we try to do is to help you to save time. Instead to develop everything by yourself, we take a lot of time, we just help you on that. And then after that you can go in the production. So I'm a little bit in advance, so we have time for questions if you want. Uh, and then if you like, we have a booth outside where we run demonstration with this mold. So we inject the part on the front of you and we demold it, so then you can follow the production and you can touch the moment and see the process and stuff. Thank you very much for your participation and if you have any questions, please. Uh